Today I'm working on a Renault Twingo. It's got no power and it ended up being a throttle problem, accelerator problem. And you can see there just under the white stripe it says one, one to two millivolts. When I press the throttle pedal, it never changes. Let's say never changes. Point three, three, three millivolts is still nothing. So I'm gonna just bring the white stripe, move that out of the way so you can see it better. There's the other track. Now these aren't the same, one's always twice as much as the other. So what I'm going to do here is press it again to show you that that track's working. There is a delay on this, because I've got all the pads up. See, so that one's working, the other one isn't. But it's not the pedal that's at fault, it's not getting power to the pedal. So when I look at the switch on the pedal there, there's the wires. I gotta figure out which one's the power, which one's uh, the ground, and which ones are the signal. You can do that back probing it, but I'll just unplug it and show you. When I went into each one, the center one that's green is a 5 volt supply. The one just next to it that's gray, to the right of that, was a signal. That's the one that's working. The top two are zero volts, they're both grounds. And the bottom two is a five volt supply that isn't there, so it's zero volts as well. And a signal that's not putting anything out, so that's zero volts. So how do you know which one's which without a wiring diagram? Well, here's one way that I use it. I use a test light. I make sure it's a 12 volt test light. This one is 24 volt and it lights that dim. It doesn't work for this. It's no good. If you're doing cars, use a 12 volt test light and just use it as a jumper wire. I know I'm front probing this. I'm trying to do it one handed. Right. So I'm going to put this test light into there, one of the wires that was 0 volts. And I'm using the power probe just as a jumper wire, so it's coming from battery positive. No. I'm going to hit the switch here, just to make it a jumper wire, and that lights up really bright. So that's going to be a ground wire. If it's a signal, it doesn't light. Okay, I'll go to the one next to it. Same thing will happen. I'll just plug in right here. Try and get that in while it's holding the camera. Right. I think I'm in. Yeah, lights up bright. So that means they're the grounds, and there's two grounds because it's two circuits. We know what the center two are already. The green one was 5 volt supply, a signal, and a ground. And then the other one will be a ground. So we need to know which two's out of the last two, which one's which. So if I go to the one next to it, I'll start at this end. Right, um, I'm into the end one. These were all the zero volts, but this is just to figure out which one's which. This time, when I hit the switch, it didn't light. It didn't light the test light, but if we look at the track two, it's the second one up. 4999.0 is basically five volts. And that's all there is, even though I'm putting 12 volts in, it's only got a range of up to 5 volts, so that's why we only went up to 5 volts. So we know that's the signal. Okay, and then one next to it, last one, if I can get into there. Okay, not sure. When I'm looking at this, I'm not looking through the camera. So, when I'm looking through the camera, I couldn't see what I'm doing. So, right, plugged in again. Yeah, I give that power. It lights, but it's dimmer. Not sure if it comes through on the camera. It might just look the same, but it is noticeably dimmer here. So, we're going to use that one as a 5 volt power. Also, up here, when I power it up, it doesn't change, it stays. 
So we're gonna give that one five volts, plug it in, give it five volts, and see what happens. So I'm on the second one, second one in there. So I'm gonna go on to the second one in on, on that side, and I'm gonna give it five volts after it's been plugged in. So, just bear with me. Okay, this is the five volt adapter for the power probe. So, if I plug this in, it's a five volt adapter on the power probe. The power probe's own lead that goes to the ground is connected to the five volt adapter. Coming out of there, I've just put a lead and back probed onto the one that I think should have the five volts. So if I give this five volts, it'll say 12 here. Oh, on here. Don't know if it's coming in focus. 11. But basically, it's not 11. It's five coming out the end. You see the little lights on there? So I'm putting five volts into the one that we worked out should have five volts. If we look on the scan tool, second one up now has roughly half the value of the top one, which it should be. Okay, we'll look at the second one up, two millivolts. Press this, it goes to roughly half of the one above it. And I'll let it go. I'll press the accelerator pedal. Do the same thing again. Give it five volts to that five volt wire that's missing the five volts. That's roughly half again. I'll try halfway. Okay, I think that's roughly there. Roughly, if you add them together, you get the same reading. So we know it's not the pedal. We know we just need to give it the five volts. Or find the break in the wire. Anyway, I thought this would be interesting. How to find the wires, see what they are without a wiring diagram, and how to diagnose it with a test light and a power probe, power probe adapter, and looking at live data. So looking at this and seeing why do I have no five volts at that pedal? Well, I've also found. What I'll do is see it's not a broken wire, not supplying it. It's some of the sensors are on a five volt circuit. They're all getting pulled down. The other ones that are on a five volt circuit, and it's anything with three wires that I'm looking at. In this case, this one right here, some sort of pressure sensor, like the map sensor that there's one over here, looks the same. So it's like there's two pressure sensors on this. This one's fine. Still got the five volts. This one's not. So then I went round and checked all the sensors. The ones that don't have a 5 volt supply anymore, even the motors that have more than three wires, but they still need a 5 volt supply. And what I found was this pressure sensor. The one side of the accelerator pedal in the front, and underneath the car I got to the turbo position sensor. Those were the three that didn't have 5 volts. So, I've unplugged them, and just by plugging them in, it's like when, when I unplugged them, I switched off the ignition and put it back on, and it resets the 5 volts. Okay, it didn't actually blow a fuse, it's just like it reset itself so you had the 5 volts back as long as these were disconnected. Now I've got the 5 volts, at all those sensors, but the wires, but I haven't gone back under the car yet. And check. But if I connect this onto the 5 volt side, see there now I've got it back on the side that didn't have 5 volts on the accelerator pedal. So, next thing I'm going to do is send the car up, back probe the turbo position sensor, and plug it in and see if the 5 volt goes as soon as that's plugged in. To make this easier, I'll keep the 5 volt from this one. Got 5 volts there, I can monitor it just the same. See it right down there, there's the plug disconnected. I'm going to go and reach down and plug that in and see what happens to this at the same time. Let's see if I can push it in from up here.
still got the 5 volts. I didn't expect that. Oh there, it's gone. We've lost the 5 volts now. I've plugged that in. And it's killed it. So that's it. As soon as I push, push down on the multi-plug to make sure it's plugged in all the way, I lost the 5 volts. So I know which one it is. It's the turbo. I'm gonna have to get into the actuator. Potentiometer part of that. For the position sensor on the turbo. Sorry about the high-pitched uh, noise that's going on. I never thought about that. Anyway, that's just to show you that you get a full code for an accelerator pedal. You can't just really go putting a part on it. It's not going to fix it. You need to really look and see why it's faulty. In this case, it's going to be a turbo. So we know if it unplugged, we're okay. You plug it back in. And it shorts out and brings down all the other things that's on that particular 5 volt supply to the sensors. It's not all of them on 5 volts. It's half of them. It pulls them all down. Anyway, I thought it might be interesting. Thanks for watching.